we had a vote. Okay, so Helen's is Morgan Knowles and Regan Grace, plus Wigan centre Oliver Gildart have been nominated for the Young Players Award, though, Mark. Yeah, Gildart's been around for so long now, it feels like, two, two full know. seasons. Um, they you can't forget ones. that he was only 20 as this season ticked around. Mm. Um, Morgan Knowles is, is probably been one of the strongest young forwards who was eligible for this, this award, because mm. it's about... Uh, it's about play, it's players who were under 21, yeah. the, the Super League, Man of Steel Awards, um, Young Player of the Year Award goes to someone who's under 21 when the season kicked off. So maybe they didn't want to give it to all the backs because you would probably lean towards saying most of the outstanding under 21-year-olds have been yeah. outside backs. But Morgan Knowles has had, a, I guess, a strong season for St. Helens. I, it didn't jump out to me as mm. someone up for the award but when I sat down and thought about how many young forwards had made that much of an impression that were eligible for the award I sort of understood if they wanted to put a different type of player in there yeah. rather than it just be the two people who I think are significantly notable omissions from this list which is Tom Davies and Liam Marshall yeah. and that might sound you know biased and what have you as, as a Wigan fan but I'm pretty sure people who've watched them play and seen some of the some of the finishes that Marshall's managed to manufacture for himself, um, and, and some of the Davies well. and some yeah, and some of the stuff that Davies has done to help his team out in a tough uh, period. Yeah, um, yeah. In actual fact, I've got a little game for you, Tom. You have, haven't you? Yeah. So um, I've. Highlight. Can I just say at this point though, since I'm not a Wigan fan and I often like to take any opportunity I can to contradict you on this podcast, I actually agree with you about the, the, the two young Wigan lads. One of them at least should have been in this conversation, I think. Tom Davies would have been my young player of the year. Yeah. If any, it, do you know what? He's very close to player of the year for, for, for Wigan. For Wigan. Certainly. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, anyway, so I picked out the three wingers that are. You know, Pace is going to make you go off. So aged under twenty one at the start of the season. Right. Um, only one of them did I really peg for much great stuff to come from them this year. I didn't really expect Davies to break through into the first team this year. No. Um, and Marshall, I thought might have the odd game, but I didn't expect the injuries. I didn't expect the displacement of Lewis Tierney from the emergence of these two youngsters. Mm. But I said at the start of the year, Regan Grace would come into the Saints side at some point, and when he did, he would look good and he would impress. Mm. But anyway, so yeah, three wingers, winger one, winger two, and winger three, Tom. Okay, okay. I'm going to run through the, the stats for the games they've played, the tries they've scored, the assists they've made, the tackle busts, the clean breaks, the metres per game, their metres per carry, and then the number of errors they've made. Yeah. Okay? okay. And then you can guess which one is which of the three wingers and which one's the one that's on the, the short list. Okay. So, winger one has played 21 games. He's scored 21 tries. He hasn't actually set up any for his, um, for his teammates, yeah. but he's got a try a game record in Super League this season. Yeah. He's made 65 tackle busts, um, which is set, ranked two of these three. Yeah. Um, he's made 28 breaks, mm-hmm. which is ranked one of these three. He's made 102 metres per game and 8.2 metres per carry. Both of those are ranked three, third yeah. out of these three. Um, and 19 errors, which is the second least mm-hmm. of these three. Okay. Winger 2 uh, has played 20... Do I get to take who I think that is yet? We'll, we'll do them all three first. Okay. Winger 2 has played 22 games. Sorry, does this count towards my quiz tell? No. He's played 22 <laughs> games. He's scored 10 tries, so that. The, the fewest amount of tries of the three players I'm going to talk about. One assist, which is tied first. 66 tackle busts, which mm-hmm. is one more than winger one. Yeah. That makes him the most uh, in this category. 19 clean breaks, which is the least. 113 metres per game, which is a little bit more than the, the, the one we just talked about, but significantly distant second. Mm-hmm. 8.7 metres per carry, which, um, if I went to two decimal places would be fractionally put him in second place. Well, let's say tied first. Yeah. 29 errors, which is 10 more than second place. Yeah. Uh, there. Winger three has also played 22 games. He's got 13 tries and one try assist. So more tries than winger two, but not as good a strike rate as winger one. 57 tackle bus, which is the lowest in that number, but he's made 23 clean breaks and a massive 153 metres per, ga- per, ga- per, per game, Sorry, which isn't just the best of these three players. It's the best of any player who played more than 10 regular season games 
um, yeah. slash no sorry Super League game so okay. over the 30 games yeah. anyone who played more than 10 in any position uh, 8.7 metres per carry 16 errors so by, so you know the fewest there um, in that count can you guess which one is the one that's in the dream in the young player of the year conversation well knowing enough about reading race as I do and um, no, probably there's a reason why we're doing this. I would say, so. <laughs> I would say it's probably is it, is it winger two, Mark, the one with the least tries and the most errors? Yeah, it's the one with the least tries, the least clean breaks, and the most errors. Okay, winger one is Liam Marshall. That's correct. And winger yeah. three is Tom Davies. Yeah, who would be my? Uh, well, that means per carry. Uh, that means per game, and means per carry stat is, is just phenomenal for a young man, isn't it? And he's played down the side that Wigan don't go to as much in attack. We gave those stats out earlier in the year, didn't yeah. I? When I was sort of bemoaning Wigan's reliance on one side compared to say Castleford who was scoring freely on both sides because they were playing so much better than other teams have and yeah. um, Wakefield have scored freely through both wings this yeah. season as well for example uh, yeah there you go and I, I just as good as Regan Grace is as much as I enjoy watching what he can do and how he runs and that sort of stuff mm. I just can't understand if they were only going to pick one winger why the third best winger eligible based on performance and stats, is the one that's got in go. to the conversation. That's all. Mm. But, you know... Who gets your vote then out of Knowles, Regan, Grace and Gildart? I suspect Gildart. Uh, yeah, it's close between Grace and Gildart, but I would I would edge towards Gildart. I would also edge towards Gildart, and it pains me to do this, because, again, it's just turning into the We Agree With Each Other podcast. Um, Morgan Knowles has had a good season, um, without ever really... Really setting the world on fire for me. Regan Grace is exciting and enjoyable to watch when he's running ball in hand, but there is elements to his game that he needs to fix up. Whereas Lee Gildart, for me, really can only kick on, and, and he's at the point in his career where he will either, over the next two years, go on to be totally world class, or he will remain a very, very good player. I don't see there being a drop off. I don't see there being many holes in his game. Yeah, um, and I, and that's at a young age. That was at twenty one at the start of the year. So he's got twenty at the start of the year. Twenty, yeah. forgive me, at the start of the year. So he's got another. 10 to 12 years ahead of him where he could really hit the heights and he Let's hope so. exhibits those qualities, doesn't he? Okay, uh, Francis Cummins, remember him, has secured a return to rugby league. He's done his best. No, 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 we've missed oh, no. a bit out. Have we? Yeah, we missed the dream team that I was going to... Oh, in. of course. Sorry, it's I apologise. And I also I meant to say the that. youngest of those three is Tom Davies. Yes. Um, okay, so, by like a month, though. Castleford Tigers' dominance of Super League... favourite is... colour. Okay. <laughs> Castleford Tigers' dominance of Super League in 2017 has been reflected in six Dream Team selections, mm. uh, six matches, Hull FC's Hall of last year and Wigan's Hall of, I think, three or four times I've had six. So um, it's the second most that any team's had is six. So well done to them. Certainly reflects what they've done. Man of Steel nominees, Zach Hardacre and Luke Gale, are joined by Greg Eden, Michael Shenner, and Grant Millington and Mike McMeekin in the 13 man lineup. The third. Uh, the. Th- huh? The third of the players nominee- nominated for. This doesn't read well, does it? Whatever I've copied and pasted. The third Man of Steel nominee, <laughs> Albert Kelly, is one of two players from the Challenge Cup winners, Hull FC. Leeds, Saints, Wigan, Salford, Huddersfield all contribute one player each to the Dream Team. Yeah. And the Dream Team is, if you haven't seen it already, Zach Hardacre from Castleford at fullback. Greg Eden on one wing. With Michael Shenton, his Castleford teammate, uh, as one of the centres. Mark Percival of Saints is the other centre, with Mahi Fanua of Hull on the other wing. Albert Kelly of Hull and Luke Gale of Cass are the halves. The front row is Grant Millington from Cass, Matt Parcel from Leeds, Seb Ikehifo from Huddersfield. Then in the back row, it's Ben Murnett Masilla from Salford, Salford's second ever selection only um, in the Dream Team since 1996. So well done to him and to them. Mike McMeekin of Cass and Sean O'Loughlin. Of Wigan is the loose forward. Um, um, yeah, we got some some feedback and stuff. I'll get that up whilst you give me your views or they give the good people your views. Yeah, I don't have a lot of problems with this. Look, everyone's been talking about the prop forwards and you know Watson, Wormsley are the ones that, you know are the big ones to miss out. And I think in, in prop forwards, you're always going to have your home favourites, and there's always going to be in pretty much every team. There's one guy who does that job. I don't think it's necessarily fair on Semika Hihifo that he's coming in for this level of stick. Wolsey has had a tremendous season, absolutely, and Liam Watts is a phenomenal forward. But Ika Hihifo has had a breakout year, and his running of the ball uh, has been has been absolutely dominant, and he skittles guys out of the way, and I think he, he deserves his place. 
in the dream team. So Has that been a big controversy? Though? Seems to have been. What well, I was following on Twitter, I just assumed the big controversy was a Wigan player being in. There. Well, we'll get we'll get to that in a minute. Um, because that's all I saw, to be honest. I, did, I saw suggestions about other props who should have been in there. Yeah. I think prop was the hardest position to pick this, this, this year. Mm. I think prop was the toughest because there was, there was four or five yeah. who were so good yeah. there was a fact that paper, they all could have been picked. Fact paper between for me. Graham Ellington thoroughly deserves to be in there, though. Um, I agree with Parcel at Hooker. I have no problem with that. Um, ben Murdoch was still in at the second row. That's the one I would have changed. I would have had Liam Farrell in, in second row for me oh, this year. Oh, still might No, hard. well, I knew that as soon as I said it, but I'm going to be true to myself. I think, yeah, I think Liam Farrell... Ben Murdoch must have started the season well, but he's been part of this Salford squad that has just been like plummeting down the league and has only recently kind of come back into form. So he would Has he come back into form? Mm, exactly. I'm, I'm trying to do him... I'm trying to do the compliment sandwich for him. Um, so Liam Farrell would have gone in for me. Percival in at centre... He can't question his talent, but again, he's 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 got an error in him. Um, I look. There's too many Castleford players in this for some people's likings. I would have gone Jake Webster. Um, I think Webster's had a fantastic season. Not not Junior Sal. Talking of other players, again who, though, for, for twenty but, games played phenomenally well. Yeah. Well, this is the thing. If I'm if I'm saying that for Ben Murdoch Masilla, I can't then stick Junior Sal in. But Junior and, and I think we all know what a big wraparound Junior Sal I am. Um, lockers. I don't disagree with necessarily because I think you want. I like a loose forward who can who can ball play, and there is no one better than him at that job. But maybe Cuthbertson in at loose forward would have been well, a shout. That's the thing I've. I'm not kicking off about this. I might have been tempted to go with Cuthbertson at loose forward to squeeze him in, but then I would have felt a little bit bad for Wormsley and Watts, who've been well. Watts over the last two months mm. has been as good as any prop forward other than Luke Thompson yeah. those two have been as good as you know in the in the league mm. certainly run on team wise as well yeah. um, and Alex Wormsley has been sensational all year and I would have felt bad sort of elevating Cuthbertson who I put behind yeah. Wormsley and Watts yeah. on a par maybe with Taylor and Thompson yeah. but behind those other two jumping them ahead of them to put in a position that actually, if you actually look at where his team have named him on the team sheet, yeah. and I'm not talking about where he might have ended up playing minutes in games, because that's hard to tell with middle unit forwards now, isn't it, yeah. unfortunately? Um, so it makes the differentiation a bit less, whereas Lo- Sean O'Loughlin still demonstrates loose forward, forward in talent. the fact that he you know, kicks and passes probably covers and offloads a lot and does pass a bit, but O'Loughlin probably plays more of a playmaking role than any other hmm. loose forward, and we've all harken back to the ball make the ball playing loose forwards of sort of the early years of Super League, in particular like Farrell and Sculthorpe and hmm. um, what was his name Smith at Hull for a period, and people like that, and um, yeah. But uh, O'Loughlin's played like twenty two games or something, and in particular in the Super Eights. And certainly over the last month, his last three or four games, mm. has been absolutely brilliant. Yeah. And maybe that's edged him into the conversation because he was patchy throughout the rest of the season. There were some great games, there were some not so good games. Yeah. Now, what I think about some of these toss-up calls is they've gone with the player who's had the biggest difference on their team. Yeah. So Percival, maybe we say he makes a lot of errors, but he makes so many errors because Saints... Relying, For so long yeah. in this season, relied on him to be, as well as, you know, Roby and Wormsley. But Percival was their strike threat in yeah. the backs for That's so right. much of this season. True. Um, and he was so good at doing that, even though he was making a lot of errors. He's way up there in the error list, actually. But, you know, Albert Kelly's always up there in the errors, too. But he's been a bit of a game-breaker at times yeah. as well. Um, and because people just seem to forget about the most try assists in the league um, and the fact that in the regular season... He was con- George Williams was contributing more tries and assists combined than any other halfback in the competition, including Luke Gale. People forget, maybe, I don't know, about him because he's been so off the boil in the last seven weeks, two months. Mm. So that Albert Kelly's the obvious choice there. Now, Percival makes a huge difference for St. Helens with what he's contributed this season. So I think that's why he's been ahead of other good performers in the centres. Um, Parcel, it was Parcel or... M- McShane wasn't it yeah, really yeah. If, if we're honest and Parcel has been so integral to Leeds this year yeah. hit the ground running in a new competition and absolutely destroyed the opposition so I think 
Matt Parcell is in there ahead of Mexico.